Did the elusive samurai and Vistoria undergo quality dips? An ongoing show got delayed indefinitely because of production issues. Entire episodes from popular titles like Dan Dadan got leaked in what is shaping up to be one of the biggest anime leaks in recent memory. And I read Alice in Borderland. I just did that. Welcome back to another episode of This Week in Anime. Face cam or not, these videos are never on time, are they? Make sure to subscribe. The term CGI is most commonly used to refer to 3D computer graphics. The elusive samurai and Vistoria wand and sword. Two incredible looking shows now look less incredible. Let's start with the elusive samurai, the more shocking of the two. The show looked phenomenal near the start. The first three episodes, especially episode two, looked unreal. And then things started to go, I don't know, downhill seems like too strong of a word. Downstairs, maybe. Let's start with the elephant in the room, or rather, the CGI in the arena. Episode Episodes 4 and 5 made a sudden dramatic turn towards the third dimension. They made heavy use of CGI, and this usage wasn't limited to 3D backgrounds and mob characters. Actual foreground characters were 3D, and let's just say it didn't look the best. Now, as many of you know, I don't have a problem with CGI. I'm fine with it, and I'm lenient towards it. And in a vacuum, the CGI isn't bad. However, we need to consider the overall context. The elusive samurai since the start had a very 2D-like presentation, if that makes sense. The flat colors, the exaggerated lifelike animation, the whole nine yards. They established their visual identity as one that relied on drawing power and expressiveness. Which is precisely why the CGI looks and feels so out of place. Let's look at Chainsaw Man for a second and just to clarify, I'm not comparing the two. Completely different circumstances, this is just an example. Chainsaw man had a near photorealistic style. The characters didn't break out into chibi forms and the line art didn't undergo dramatic shifts. The 2D animation was lifelike and weight filled and all of these factors made the 3D models look more natural. That's not the case here. The elusive samurai looks about as 2D as a 2D show can look. Everything about the aesthetic screams hand drawn. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Heavy CG use feels out of place in a show like The Elusive Samurai. Also, the CG had plenty of issues. Stiff animation, compression, lack of blending in, etc. Although they did create a few cool dynamic shots. So why did they do this? Well, I'm not entirely sure myself, which is precisely why I haven't made The Elusive Samurai video yet. Based on what I've heard and take this with a grain of salt, the production is struggling behind the scenes. That would make sense, as not only is the CGI use somewhat excessive, the amount of 2D highlights has taken a nosedive as well. The last two episodes had very little to offer in this department and that normally would be expected given the current state of the industry. However, this is a Shota Umehara project. You usually associate his name with quality. And I know it's an unfair thing to do, but still, no other show of his took this dramatic of a dip from what I can remember. I'll wait for more information to come out, but it's quite sad. Add. As for Vistoria, well, it was well within my expectations. Vistoria was never a major production, it had an incredible director, but most of the highlights were either boarded and corrected by him or his close associates. It wasn't going to be a Sakuga fest, that's why I covered the first episode of it instead of the elusive samurai because I knew that I probably wouldn't get that many opportunities to do so after episode 1. I knew the production would have its little moment, but make no mistake, it still looks great. Episode 2 featured incredible action and episode 3 was quite solid as well. Episode 4 was… whatever, I think it was outsourced at least to a degree. Given the fact that it is a Yoshihara project, I would expect another major highlight or two. As for the elusive samurai, I don't know what's going on. Speaking of production issues, these two shows are doing just fine, compared to our last crusade season 2. The visuals completely fell apart as early as the second episode. The third one did feature an impressively ambitious style of action, but the cracks were obvious. And now the show has been delayed, not for a week, but indefinitely. Usually shows undergo weekly delays first, look at Nier or Zom 100. But the production here was so messed up that they didn't even bother with that, they just went, yup, it's been a nice four episode long ride, see you someday, maybe. Jokes aside, it's quite sad. And unfortunately, stuff like this will only become more common as time goes 
goes on. On a more positive note, Too Many Losing Heroines has been a lot of fun. It's probably my favorite show from this season. And Days With My Stepsister continues to be well directed. If you're not watching it, you need to. One of the episodes had a proper lo-fi music video in the middle of it. It's amazing and it got its own Sakuga blog article. I recommend reading it. I'll link it down in the description. Massive data breach that just happened. They got everything. Leaks, a major problem that plagues the modern anime industry. There was a big one today. The situation is still ongoing, but as of this recording, six whole episodes from Dan Da Dan, that's half the entire show, has been leaked, along with its opening and ending. Besides that, episodes from the Ranma remake and the Mononoke movie have also been leaked. Now, of course, I won't show anything on screen, and I can't confirm all of it because I didn't go out of my way to find them. However, I can say with certainty that the first two episodes of Dan Da Dan did in fact get leaked because I myself came across them on Twitter. The exact source of the leaks hasn't been confirmed yet. Some say it was a rogue staff member leaking stuff, while others say that it was a vulnerability on Netflix's server, and the latter sounds more plausible. It's deplorable. I don't need to explain why something like that is awful. If you don't understand what the problem is, maybe you're part of the problem. Not only is this a spit in the face of everyone who worked on the show, it's also a lose-lose situation for us fans. Why would you watch the leaks even if you lacked a moral compass or a spine? The leaks are 360p at best and have watermarks and time codes burned into the footage. It's not the same thing as watching the official release. Who does this benefit? It's not the same thing as someone leaking a staff list or a few bloody screenshots. And people can just get away with it, at least that's what it seems like. Anime companies don't have the time to keep these leaks in check as they are too busy copyright striking YouTubers for no reason. At the end of the day, all I can do is encourage you guys to not watch the leaks. Whether or not you listen to a random guy's wisdom is entirely up to you. Use your own judgment, that's all I got. Fuck your homie dear. The Alice in Borderland manga has a non-spoiler review. It was great, although the final arc slash conclusion was significantly better than the rest of it. Overall, the dark tone was handled really well in my opinion. It was bleak but not overly edgy and trust me, there's a fine line between those two things. I can't say I was a fan of the series cutting away from our established main characters to focus on new guys for several chapters at a time. I think it was distracting. I know many of them came back in a full circle moment. However, that doesn't change the fact that their initial appearance ruined the overall flow of the story. The Queen of Hearts arc was some premium weapons grade mindfuckery and it was perfect. It baited me into questioning everything I knew about the series and then it did the exact same thing again, all in the span of like 5 chapters. It was insane. A good portion of the final chapter consisted of random guys framed in a similar manner, one after the other answering the same question, that is, why are you still alive? Everybody had a different answer. Some were nonchalant while others were grandiose. Some were cynical while others simply didn't care. And given the context, it, I can't lie, it caught me a little. Overall, it was great. I definitely recommend it. I won't go into all the other stuff I've watched and read since the last video. There's not a lot worth talking about. Burn the Witch was nice, but that's pretty much it. See you guys in the the next one which as always won't be on time that's about it like the video check out this other bit of content on screen like and subscribe and until next time